Howdy Travis from Know How here. In this video, we're gonna walk through how you can take the processes that we have looked at, the files, and turn them into step-by-step -step repeatable workflows so you can train and onboard your staff standardized across every single All right, so we're back in Know How. We missed you. And uh, today we're gonna explore the Workflows tab and we're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. So here in Workflows, you have seen this a little bit in some of our previous videos, but what we're going to do is we're going to ignore all of this at the start and we're going to build a workflow from scratch. By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly what is going on throughout this entire screen this Workflows tab is going to feel like home to you. You're going to set up some photos of your family. You're going to have little indents in the couch cushions where you like to sit. This is going to be your new home. But we'll get there in time. Now, for the start, we're just going to click this button that says Create Workflow. And here is where we're going to build a brand new workflow from scratch. So let's click the button that says Build Workflow from scratch. Let's pretend that we are training a new water technician and we're wanting to build water technician training. In the next video, we're gonna show you some of the templates we have so you don't have to build water tech training from scratch, but I wanna show, even if we did it the most difficult way possible, it's not actually all that difficult. So we're gonna call this water technician training. We'll ignore kind of all these other details for now and click assign and continue. So here is a blank workflow. It's empty in here, but we're gonna click this edit tab and we're gonna get to work sprucing it up a little bit. Here is where I can add some text to welcome people. So I might say, welcome to the team. We're super excited to have you as a water technician. Feel free to put there whatever you want, but we'll leave it for now. Over here, this is the fun part. This is where you take all the processes that we have in our system that we have spent the last few videos looking at in different ways, shapes, and forms, and turn them into a step-by-step -step repeatable onboarding. So I'm gonna select, let's see, we're onboarding water techs. So if I've done a good job tagging things, then I will isolate my mitigation processes. What else do I have here? Um, oh, let's just do that for now. Yep, that's good. Sometimes we've got like water tech training mold. We'll do a separate mold one maybe later, but for now, here we have just a bunch of water mitigation processes. So uh, I'm going to just select the processes that are relevant that I want my team members to know if they're becoming a new water technician. So let's scroll through these. We're not gonna go through all of them. You can have 15, you can have 30, you can have 100, as many as you want. So we selected the ones that we liked and then now we've clicked add here. I can scroll down more and, uh, and add some more, but 10 is a good place to start. So now what I wanna do is I wanna choose the order that this is going to be assigned to my team members. And so let's say if I'm looking at these, super important right off the bat, Don and Doff, proper PPE, analyze job flow and understand the classes of water damage. I like this, this is good. This is the safety piece and the higher level theoretical part, very, very important. So we're gonna assign that for day one. Let's just make that today and we'll come back to that after. We're not gonna assign it to anyone in particular. We'll get to that part later. And we're not gonna add a label yet. We'll get to that part later too. So we're gonna click confirm. And now these three have been added to this date, Thursday, October 23rd. Let's keep going. Dry hardwood floors, detach a toilet, remove baseboard and trim, calculate stand. These are all tactical things and ask, actually set up a containment too. So these are gonna be assigned, there you go. And then finally, these ones, we will assign them to Monday. All right, so now you can see we've got the 10 things that we think are necessary. You'll probably have actually closer to 30 or 40 in order to become a water technician here. There's one more thing that I can do that I wanna show you, which is start to categorize these in different phases. So if you wanna organize them by due date, so hey, this is everything you need to do on Thursday, here's everything you need to do on Friday, here's everything you need to do on Monday, great. But we have another option as well. A lot of companies 
they like breaking it into different chunks. So let's say this is the theory and this is the practice. So here's the seven or eight processes that you need how to understand moisture levels in a room or how to understand the classes and category of water damage. And so that's going to be our, our more theoretical piece. And then we're going to have the practical, tactical stuff of setting up containments, detaching a toilet, things like that. So let's go here and we're going to select those two because those are both more theoretical. And actually, we'll add this one too because this is more theoretical as well. And we're going to add this label theory. Save it. So now these have the label theory you can see here. Let's go to these other ones and label these ones practice. A new label here, practice, confirm. So now everything either has the label theory or practice. So if you want, you can still organize this by due dates, but now you've got the option, if you click up here, to organize everything by labels as well. So then your workers can see, hey, we've got the practice and we've got the theory. Now let's obviously move the theory up above the practice. There we go. It makes way more sense. So now I can organize it into different groups as well. That's how the labels feature works. There's a few other critical things about workflows I want to show you. And then we're going to show you how you can create a carbon copy of this for all of your new water technicians. So you'll notice here on the right hand side, there is this little graduation cap. This shows you if a skill builder has been activated for this process. Remember skill builders? We saw them a few videos ago. That's where we use artificial intelligence to create multiple choice tests for your staff. Here you can see which ones have been cr created for each process and which ones still need to be created. So let's take this one, add skill builder for calculating the standing water present on a water loss and click generate. Now this is going to create skill builders right before our eyes for this process as well. I can very quickly activate them for each process in my workflow. This means that when I'm onboarding my new water technicians, they're not just going, yes, complete, complete. I know that. I know that. I know that. We're actually measuring if they know it or not and confirming their competency. If I want, at the end of the workflow, I can add what we call a summary check. This is the final boss. This is the skill builder to end all skill builders that's going to draw questions from other skill builder processes and present your new water technician with a final test to confirm their competency once they've completed this whole work. Lastly, I want to show you what we call dependencies. So dependencies allows you to control the order that your staff go through this workflow that we just created. So for example, we had that understanding the classes of water damage, then analyzing job flows. I could say you have to do it in the you cannot start analyzing the job flow until you finish understanding the classes of water damage. If so, I can select this lock process order within the workflow. I can also click this one, lock step order within the workflow. What that's going to do is it's going to say you can't start step two until step one is completed. Now we have found workers really appreciate choice. And so this is up to you. We encourage companies, don't activate that unless it's very, very important that they do things in a specific order. But a lot of research has been done that proves when workers feel like they have some autonomy, they can choose what order they do some things in. It allows them to feel more ownership and more motivation to complete the task. But those options are there for you if you want them. Now we have this full water technician training, and we're going to turn it into what we call a repeatable workflow. So a repeatable workflow takes this training that we created and allows us to assign it to anyone over and over and over again. So I'm going to create this called test water technician training. I can assign it tags like hashtag onboarding or hashtag water technician. I can also assign a badge. And so if you've got new water techs on your team, super motivated, we can give them a badge after they complete this workflow to show off on their profile, make them look like a rock star to the rest of their team. 
So in this case, I can upload my own if I've got my company branded badges I like to use, or why don't I just search for something like water? And in this case, I'll select this one. So now any worker that completes this training is going to get that badge assigned to them and on their profile. We're going to save as a workflow. Now, once this is done, we're going to go back to the workflows tab. And here's where we can start to play with the other aspects of the system here. Pardon me. So up here are all of the repeatable workflows we've created. So if I scroll over, we're going to see our new water technician training called test water technician training. Here are all the team members that I have on the right hand side here. So if I've got Brayden and he is joining our team as a new water technician, I'm going to drag Brayden over, drop him on here, and I'm going to customize the start date. Now this is really cool because what this does is it ensures that even though it was October 23rd when I created this, if we assign it to October 27th, now day one, day two, those all spill down depending on what the start date is. So I can have dynamic start dates based on the specific order that I laid it out in. If I click assign and continue, that's going to assign this new water technician onboarding to Brayden on our team. Or I can click assign and edit and customize it. Maybe Brayden already knows all the theory. And so we don't need to spend time on that part. Or maybe he struggles with the theory and we want to go even deeper in that. You've got the ability to customize it for every role based on this template we've created, this repeatable workflow. If I want to see where everyone is at and all the training I've assigned, all I have to do is click on them. So I've got Joe Williams here. I'm going to click on Joe. And then here it's going to show all the workflows that Joe has been assigned and the status of each of them. So down here at the bottom, you can see this shows all active workflows. I can organize it by specific people like Chelsea or Joe by clicking on them here. I can also view the workflows that have been completed by clicking this filter toggle here. This is only going to show completed workflows. They're all 100%. Or I click here, it's only going to show incomplete workflows. You can see how powerful Workflows is. Workflows takes your step-by-step -step processes and turns them into repeatable standardized training for every role in every location or every franchise. Everyone's getting the exact same high quality training and you can see where everyone's at in their training. In the next video, we're gonna go even deeper into KnowHow's templates functionality so you don't have to build any of those workflows from scratch. You can import processes and workflows built by the best in the industry. I'll see you there.